the second place that we can find little ideas is what I like to refer to as the overlooked moments in our lives. And the reason why I like to call these the overlooked moments is that as we go through life, right, we're focused on reaching and achieving the different goals that we set for ourselves. So now what I'd like for you to do is to imagine that these different boxes here are the, the goals that we set for ourselves, right? So think about it. Set this, yourself a goal. I'm going to graduate from high school. Then move to the next step. Say, for example, for me, it was I'm going to go to college. Then I want to graduate from college, right? Then I want to find a career, right? And so forth. And as we go through life, this is what we're focused on doing is reaching and fulfilling those lifetime goals that we set for ourselves. And this is great. A lot of people say, hey, Mr. K, are you saying it's bad to set goals for yourself? No, it's not. But what happens as we do this is that we're focusing on what? Big things, okay? And then what happens is that we miss, we overlook the space in between the big things. And this is where little ideas lie and we often overlook them and not pay attention to them. And I've always been the kind of the person who believes that it's the little things in life that, that really matter, that we're too focused in America on the big things and we need to pay more attention to the little things. And once you develop this skill in your life, what you can see is, believe it or not, you can see God working in your life in a real way, in a real meaningful way. So now, what I'd like to share is a quick little story of a little idea, and then when you take a look at the example paper and all the pre-writing, you'll see how it's going to flesh out. So, um, years and years ago, in the years BC, you might know what BC stands for? Well, it does stand for before Christ, but when you're married, it also stands for before children. So this is back in the day before my wife and I had kids, and we're from Alabama. So for Christmas one year, we drove down to Alabama to spend Christmas with the relatives. I know you're thinking to yourself, I don't care about all this, Mr. K. Well, um, back during that time, I owned a little Toyota Tercel, and that car was so little that when you were driving it, right, and then a semi would pass you on the interstate, you'd look over and you realize that the, just the tires on a semi truck were bigger than my car. And if it drifted over to my lane, I'd be crushed. So what started to happen to me is I started to become afraid of big semi trucks, right? And this is crazy behavior. And then even crazier, I start to become afraid of truckers. Why? Because I'm crazy. Because their trucks were bigger than my car. So this had been going on for a while. And then we were driving back from that Christmas break when my wife and I were taking turns driving so we could really knock out some mileage. And I had been driving, so I took a nap. And then my wife, she took over and did some driving. Then she woke me up from my nap and she said, we're running low on gas. And then I said, stop and get some. And I went back to sleep. Then I remember waking up. And so I remember the previous conversation. So I looked out my window and I was expecting to see a gas station, but instead I saw pine trees. I thought, huh, I was still kind of groggy. And then I turned to my left to look at my wife and she was holding on to the steering wheel, looking straight ahead, and just cars were going by. Boom, 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 boom. And then she said, still looking straight ahead, holding on to the steering wheel, we, I like the use of that collective pronoun, we are out of gas. What had happened? Uh, she, had, she remembered to wake me up, but she forgot to stop. 
right? So at that moment, as the husband, I was only faced with two options. Number one, flip out, yell at my wife, or start walking for gas. And a lot of people say, well, why don't you call her on your cell phone? Well, this is the days before cell phone technology. So I took option B. I said, okay. Not inside my head, but that's what came out of my mouth. I said, okay. So I put my jacket on, zipped up, and got out of the car and started walking. Now, initially, I really wasn't that worried because we're from Alabama. There's lots of good Christian folks in Alabama. It's the buckle of the Bible Belt. I said, you know what? I'm going to walk maybe 10, 15 yards, and somebody's going to, some, somebody full of Christmas spirit, holiday cheer, is going to pull over and give me a ride and it's be taken care of like that. Well, I started walking and kept walking, and guess what? Evidently, that day, the hundreds of cars that passed me were not driven by Christians because not anyone exhibited any charity, you know, showed me any kind of love. So I kept walking and kept walking, and then I realized, wow, what if somebody pulls over and offers to give me a ride, and I look, and I'm, you know, I say, obviously, you know, you're playing a banjo in there. I'm not getting in the car with you, man. You know, what, what am I going to say then? Now, when I was thinking those crazy thoughts, I heard a marvelous sound. What did I hear? I heard the hiss of diesel brakes, right? That pssss. And what had happened was that a big semi-truck had passed me, right? And then pulled over into the shoulder, and then I looked ahead. And in that moment, in that moment, excuse me, in that moment, guess what I knew? I knew that God was going to teach me a lesson because I'd been afraid of those trucks and truckers. So I ran up to that truck and called up to the cab and voice called down to me and said, was that your car, you know, 17 miles back? And then I said, yeah, and he said, is there an emergency? And I thought, hmm, that's interesting because he's concerned for my safety, right? And I said, no, we just ran out of gas. And then guess what he said? Hey. We'll take you to a gas station. So I climbed up into the cab, and then, for my first time ever being in a cab, and it was a work truck. It wasn't one of these long haul trucks. And there are two bucket seats, dashboard, and the gear shift. And there were two truckers in there. So then I was like, well, I'm sitting on the floor. But before I could sit on the floor, the trucker in the passenger seat, he said, no man, you take my seat. And what were they doing? They're showing me charity. So guess what started to happen inside of me? I was starting to change, right? So then I took his seat, he sat on the floor. We went to the gas station. I hustled inside of there, bought a little overpriced plastic gas can, filled it up with gas, and guess what? The truckers were still waiting for me. They took me back to my car, then we ran across four lanes of interstate, which by the way, I don't recommend anybody running across four lanes of interstate because people on the interstate don't tap on brakes, okay? We ran across the interstate and then they waited after, after I put the gas in my car to make sure that my car started and everything was, was, was okay. Now, what did I learn inside of that one seemingly over forgotten thing is that this group of people that I had just been you know prejudiced against were really the best people on the interstates right nobody else offered me assistance nobody else offered to help me who did these people that I was afraid of now that fits in perfectly to the writing prompt and that it that one experience that seeming little moment here, right? It changed my life. I now no longer regard truckers with fear and hate. I now, now recognize them as really being the angels of the interstates. They're the, the, the best people that are out there. So this is the second place to have and find a little ideas between big ideas and those often overlooked moments. And again, if you'll recall, where else can we find little ideas is inside of a big idea. Now, still, once I get that, that little idea, I'm still going to have to work it through the writing process. 
So again, we have to turn away from big ideas and focus on using little ideas. They can be found inside of big ideas, but we have to dig down or we have to think about our lives in a different way to uncover those moments that we overlook and then see if we can use that as a little idea.